is Tivia Kenegas-Abson. Um, I work with WWF Canada as a marine conservation and fisheries specialist. Leatherback sea turtles are one of the largest migratory species in the world currently. As they continue to travel long distances, that exposes them to threats. WWF Canada started this project with funding received from the Habitat and Stewardship for Protection of Animals grant. With that funding, we then collaborated with Tangley Whales and FFAW to determine an effective solution for entanglement with leatherback sea turtles. My name is Everett Sakery. I'm from St. Phillips, uh, Newfoundland, Labrador, and I work for a non-profit environmental organization called Tangley Whales. I became involved with Tangley Whales, or as other people call it, whale release and strandings, in 2012 as a summer student. I was finishing off my fish and wildlife diploma and decided to come try my hand at uh, this type of work. My name is Julie Huntington and I'm a whale disentangler and I work with Whale Release and Stranding which is a non-profit group in Newfoundland and Labrador and my partner and I, Wayne Ledwell, run the organization. Well, we started after uh, John Lean stopped. Both Wayne and I had worked with John Lean in the late 80s and early 90s when cod traps were in the water and there was a lot of whale disentanglement and turtle disentanglement going on. So in Newfoundland Labrador waters we typically see them start to show up when the waters become the warmest. So for us here that would be around August month. Typically we'll see them in August, September, October, and then as the water temperature starts to drop off again in the fall, the, the leatherback turtles will start to move out. I, I was talking with Aaron from the FFAW and they were doing a project on uh, leatherback sea turtles and disentangling them because they knew that they wanted fishermen to be up to speed in disentangling the turtles themselves. So I looked at the equipment they had and I said, you know, we have that here, and we're doing that here. And so she came down to our uh, garage here, and she decided that they would start using the equipment that was already developed here and was already being used here, because we have the oldest disentanglement program in the world in Newfoundland and Labrador. My name is Erin Carruthers. I'm the fishery scientist with the Fish, Food, and Allied Workers Union here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Yeah, my name is Paul Kane. I'm an inshore fisherman from Reno's, and I'm here to try to help somebody out. I worked with Dr. John Leem back in the 70s and 80s, and uh, we were always trying to find a way to uh, deter the, 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 the whales and turtles or whatever from our fishing gear. So I've been at it a long time trying to figure out some way to do it. Yeah. The tools that we first had in Newfoundland when, when we started, you know, they were a little heavier, a um, little more shrewd, but it was what we had to work with at a moment's notice um, to deal with the situation at hand. I think the tools are really whale disentanglement tools that were adapted to disentangle sea turtles. Now the first kind of tools that we used were filleting knives. Then there's like an evolution of gear development here where we looked at having something that was uh, made into some, a, a blade that was as sharp as a knife so that we could attach it to a pole and do this at a distance. But most of these were made for disentangling whales. The problem with these tools is you would always have to be sharpening it. And we thought, well, what can be used that fishermen can use and has a readily usable part, so a readily purchasable part. So this is a new model developed to be a tool that fishermen can use on their boats so that they can disentangle a turtle themselves. It's quite well done. It has a safety cover on it, um, which you just pull off. It's got the two X-Acto blades on it. It's got set screws in here, which we encourage people to put a grease on there so that they're easy to remove. We recommend you use them only once and that you replace them because, you know, a saltwater environment, you're going to find that the blades corrode. If the turtle is 
further from your boat and you can't bring it any closer to you because of the gear or something on your boat, you can add uh, other poles to it. And this actually goes to be about nine feet long. So you just put it together. Well, over the years, we, we tried everything. Like we tie, uh, put it on our cutthroat or knives on the end of the boat hook. Yeah. You know, and you try your best to yeah. do what you could, but only when you come up with this design, it was so easy to uh, put it over because it extends. Yeah. And uh, you can get down and whatever you're cutting out, you will not cut the animal. It'll slip along his skin. The, the younger fishermen coming up, I think they'll really jump at this. Yeah. You might never use it for six months, but all of a sudden they're going to somebody say, oh, get the rope cutters. Yeah. And it's going to be there for them. And it, and it takes up no room. It's, uh, I don't know, it's a win-win situation, I think. Leatherback turtle entanglements are not an everyday thing, but if it does happen to you, you want to have the tools to be able to safely let it go. Every year we've had more and more people interested in the line cutters. We're trying to make sure that all around the island people have them. I'll touch on the time because time really is of the essence uh, with these animals. The leatherback turtles can hold their breath for upwards of 20 minutes or more. However, gear here in Newfoundland, a lot of times it's too heavy for the turtle. Time really is of the essence. Every second counts. Also, there is a direct correlation between the time an animal is caught in gear and the damage that has been done to the gear by the animal while it was caught. So from a conservation end, we need to get there to try to save this animal because it may not be able to lift the gear to the surface to get a berth. It may go out of sight and never resurface again. So then that becomes an economic detriment to the fishermen as well. Time really is of the essence on each side of the stone here, so to speak. We're gonna do a disentanglement of a turtle here. And uh, this is not a real turtle, obviously. It's to simulate how we would disentangle a, a turtle if uh, we heard about one that was caught in fishing gear. The first approach that we would make on the turtle may allow us to see that we can get that turtle out without even using a specialized cutting tool. But if we see that it's too tight, we may find that we have to cut some of the rope off the animal if there's too many loops on it. But our first approach is to let us look, how is this animal entangled? And what we can do to uh, uh, take the gear off it completely and then let it go free swimming again. So uh, Everett's gonna bring us round so that we can have a look first and see if we can disentangle it by hand and then we'll make a decision after that. So there's some of the rope of the fishing gear out to the side. I'm pulling that and hauling up. Being aware that this animal is frightened of the engine noise. So we want to work as quietly and as quickly as possible. So I have hold of the rope on the, on the turtle now, and we're going to see if we can disentangle it without using the tool. And we're going to see where on the turtle the rope is. It's around this front side fin. It seems to be through the mouth of the turtle. It's around the other side fin. And so we're going to just maneuver around so that we can see, ah, there's a line coming from its head to its back fin as well. We don't want to cut all of this off the front of the turtle and leave that on the back fin. So we would probably do something to take it off the back fin first. There, that's that line off the turtle. Now I can still hold on to the turtle, keep it towards me even though it's moving constantly. You may find that once you cut it off the back fin, it starts loosening on its own. Okay, so now we would find that probably the turtle is well on its way to being out. Could I hand that to you? Okay. Thank you. So that's that fin. Now we would say, okay, we have to go around to the other side and cut it. You don't want to cut that piece of rope holding it in place until you get all the gear off. This side, it's very loose, so I can move this off myself. 
Every turtle is different, every disentanglement is different. The main thing is getting all the gear off the animal so you give it a better chance to survive. You know, it all basically boils down to bycatch. Commercial fish harvesters are some of the best people at doing this because they understand the gear. They know where the animal is caught in their gear, they understand the rope, they understand how strong that, that rope is and what it actually takes to cut that rope. And I, I think the tools that have been developed um, by WWF in partnership with Tangley Wales and given to FFAW and uh, then on to the commercial fish harvesters in Newfoundland, it makes them aware that there is a tool out there that can do this job, which will make it easier, which will make it faster and better for them to release turtles that they have caught in their gear, and thus decreasing downtime in fishing, which is a bonus for them, and also helping the species um, get untangled and go about its life processes and hopefully adding to the population. That's what keeps me coming back doing this work. You try to create a symbiotic relationship amongst everybody us, the commercial fishers, and then also the animals that unfortunately get entangled. It's a win-win for everybody.